using the horizontal laser, 45 inches to the bottom of the box. That's going to be my standard. Again, on this particular job site, we're actually going to set everything to 48 to match existing switches that are located in drywall and parts of the house that are not being remodeled so that we have uniformity in the finished project. But for demonstration purposes, 48 inches. Again, I want to be mindful of that half inch spacing for drywall. The tabs are 3 8 I'm going to be using my nail on jig. That measurement is the bottom of the box. You'll find on architectural notes that architects will typically reference the center line of the box. That's not as practical, and we do need to relate that language to the job site language for the electrical team. 45 inches to the bottom of the box. Set my bottom nail, set my top nail, thing I like about the jig is I can locate it in my pouch for the next portion, hammer as well. And if I overdrive top or bottom nail, not only do I risk blowing out the plastic holder, but I also can cock my box such that it's not at a true angle. When terminating my switches, there is play, intentional play in the mounting mechanism of the switch or receptacle, such that if I find I'm a little bit out of a true horizontal, or lateral, I can adjust those switches up or down, plus or minus 16th of an inch. I'm gonna take my 14.2 Romex, I'm gonna enter low, do the center of the stud. I'm gonna allow myself plenty of conductor. This is my hot conductor, so I'm gonna actually cut it extra long for this switch box. My side cuts will do the task. Just like any true electrician, they've been blown out once or twice. I'm going to allow myself a service loop. And in this case, because this box is equipped with a primitive clamp at the back of the box, but for code purposes, it is considered a clamp, I have 12 inches from the point of entry along the length of the cable before the first point at which the cable is secured. Strip back the outer sheath. Using my versatile razor blade, my onboard pry bar. I'm going to enter the first knockout because this is my hot conductor. I'm gonna mark this conductor, every time there's any chance of uncertainty at what a conductor may be, mark it. Save yourself time and pay dividends on the finish out. Work my cable into the box. I'm gonna leave that in that position until I've routed all of my other cables into this box. I'm not gonna get too excited and start stapling the cable yet. I'm gonna route all of my cables into this box before I begin that process. Next product I'm using is an Ideal Cable Stacker. This Ideal Cable, cable Stacker, I'm going to be locating it within about 10 inches of the top of the box because I have 12 inches from the point of entry and I wanna leave that service loop to my first point at which the cable is secured. I'm gonna match the cable stacker to the face of the stud. You'll find cable stackers that come equipped with screws, nails. I prefer this because I'm utilizing one tool for all purposes versus carrying more weight or bending and picking up other tools. So now I'm using my 14.2 non-metallic cable again. I'm gonna be routing this into my box. All right, now my cable is secured within 12 inches along the length of the cable at the point of entry. My wire is stripped. This is going to be a switch leg. It's gonna be in the first position. The switch is, which is why I've entered it into the first knockout. 
I will then enter subsequent switches at the appropriate knockouts, whether top or bottom of the box, to help identify their location, to prevent crisscrossing, and to keep my box ordered and clean. Next product is a nail-on box.